Hi, Sophie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. We'll just wait a couple more minutes. The students are just in the waiting room now. That's totally fine. I'm just, I was running a little late, so I'm just pulling up my stuff anyway. No worries. You can um, try out your presentation or anything if you need to before the session starts. Yeah, maybe let me see. I can share my screen. Let me just open the present. You can see that, right? Yeah. How many students are in the waiting room? Uh, six so far, or seven now. I'll just give it like one or two more minutes and then I'll let them in. Sure. All right, I'm just going to let them all in now. Hi to everyone that's joined. Um, welcome to the gender studies session. Um, my name's Amani. Um, I'm part of the recruitment team and I'll just be helping facilitate this session. We are joined by Sophie, who is um, the lovely academic in the gender studies department, who's just going to take you through a little presentation um, about the program. Um, if you would like to ask any questions, you can do so. Um, there is a couple of ways to do that. We have the chat function, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. Um, and you can put a question in throughout the presentation or at the end, um, there is a dedicated Q&A session. Um, if you would also like to, you can raise your hand and unmute yourself, um, turn on your camera if you wish, if you'd like to ask any questions. Um, just know that this presentation is being recorded. So if you do um, want to do that, just know that you will be recorded as well. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Sophie. Thanks so much, Amani. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Dr. Sophie Shamas, and I'm a lecturer in gender studies uh, within the School of Law, Gender and Media, and I'm going to be walking you through our degree offerings today. So let me start off by introducing our degree programs. Sorry. So um, we've got a number of degrees on offer, uh, the MA in Gender Studies, MA Gender Studies Middle East Pathway, MA Transnational Queer Feminist Politics, MA Transnational Queer Feminist Politics Middle East Pathway, um, MA Gender Studies and Law, and we also have a distance learning or purely online program, the MA Gender Sexuality in Global Politics. Um, you can do um, uh, any of our master's programs uh, with the exception of the distance learning one, either full-time uh, or part-time over the course of two or three years. Um, now, our degree programs really um, in sort of, you know, the thing that connects all of them is that uh, they allow students to draw on the expertise of staff across SOAS to develop a bespoke degree on the specialized study of gender in relation to Asian, African, and Middle Eastern cultures and societies. 
Um, and in terms of who our programs will appeal to, they can really appeal to students with a variety of backgrounds and objectives. For example, uh, women's, uh, women's studies or gender studies students who wish to engage more deeply with gender theory um, in relation to regional specialization. Uh, so especially, but not exclusively, the societies of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, like I said. Um, now, those coming from Asian, African, or Middle Eastern studies uh, who wish to incorporate the study of gender uh, into their own areas of expertise would also benefit from our programs. Um, those who have previously trained in specific disciplines, so anthropology, cultural and media studies, religious studies, complete history, politics, um, sociology, but are looking for, uh, you know, to kind of really develop uh, a gender angle um, or to kind of engage in a more interdisciplinary uh, degree program, this would be a good fit for you. And of course, our program is also geared towards professionals who have been working in the field of gender and sexuality, but would like to acquire the critical thinking skills needed uh, to work through the experiences they faced in these sectors. Now, to break down each of our degrees, uh, they're essentially distinguished by the kinds of courses that you're required to take when enrolled onto them. So our most general degree is the MA in Gender Studies, and it's also our most flexible degree. Um, so it only you're only required to take two core modules when you're on this degree, and the rest of your modules you can choose from a list of optional modules that include both gender studies offerings, but also a variety of courses from across the university. So this is really the degree that, that kind of allows you to, to tailor, uh, tailor it along the lines of what your own interests are. So the core modules that you would have to take and students across our degrees have to take are gender theory and the study of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. This is a year long module. It's the module that really introduces you to the core theories that are relevant uh, to the study of gender and sexuality um, at the intersection of postcolonial studies. And then the other uh, required module you would take is dissertation methods for gender studies. This usually takes place in term two. Um, and it's the, it's the module that prepares you to write your dissertation. So that's the third requirement across all our degrees that you would have to write a 12,000 word dissertation. So in the case of this degree, you would have a total of 75 credits left to take from optional modules from across the university. Uh, so like I said, quite flexible. Um, in terms of what distinguishes the core teaching on this program, uh, the MA Gender Studies moves attention away from Western gender theory uh, by exposing students to scholarship from across the global South uh, in order to help expand how you conceptualize gender. So really the objective is to broaden your understanding of gender relations in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East, and to encourage you to interrogate the power relations that shape how we understand gender in non-Western societies. Now, in terms of the MA in Gender Studies with special reference to the Middle East, uh, as the name suggests, this program comes with a region, regional specialization, and it requires that you take our Middle East focused modules, which essentially um, critically examine discourses on gender and sexuality in the Middle East and provide an alternative approach to the study of gender and sexuality in a region that is quite misunderstood and maligned. Um, so in addition to gender theory and dissertation methods, you would be required to take gender in the Middle East, as well as queer politics in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. The courses that um, are specific to this program uh, draw on the rich and diverse body of work from, from the Middle East um, or about the Middle East that are invested in offering um, nuanced historical and, and contemporary accounts of gender and sexuality in the region. Now, in terms of our MA Transnational Queer Feminist Politics, uh, the modules required for this program really focus on getting you to critically investigate the relationship between area studies and queer theory. Um, so in addition to gender theory and dissertation methods, you would have the option of taking either transnational queer trans and disability studies or queer politics in Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Of course, you can also take both of these uh, uh, courses if you want, and they would just, the second would fall under your optional module offerings. 
So the courses specific to this program um, introduce you to the literature on transnational feminism, uh, queer diasporas and queer of color critique, and the important theoretical and political interventions that they've made, um, not only in the realms of women's and LGBT rights advocacy, but also more broadly in terms of how we imagine emancipatory politics on a, on a larger scale. Now, our MA Transnational Queer Feminist Politics with special reference to the Middle East. Um, again, this comes with a regional specialization uh, and this program applies the theoretical and methodological frameworks that distinguish the general TQFP degree to the study of the Middle East. So here again, you're required to take our Middle East offerings, but with more of an emphasis on queer theory rather than just gender studies. So this is our least flexible degree. Um, and in addition to gender theory and dissertation methods, you would be required to take gender in the Middle East, uh, queer politics in Asia, Africa and the Middle East and transnationalizing queer trans and disability studies. You would be left with 30 credits from optional modules. So that would either mean one 30 credit module or two 15 credit modules. Uh, now, you know, in terms of the specificity of the Middle East, the core modules on this program examine how gender and sexuality are lived and negotiated in the, in the Middle East and elsewhere, with a particular emphasis on the ways in which people in or from the region grapple with how to live a non or an anti-normative life. And importantly, these modules approach the Middle East as a transnational rather than a bounded space. Uh, so a space uh, uh, to which and from which discourses people and commodities move. Uh, and we invite students to think through what this might mean for the study of gender and sexuality in the region. Now, our MA Gender Studies and Law, uh, and Law offers a specialized study of gender and law in relation to the cultures of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Uh, so the program really focuses on enabling students to study gender issues in relation to a particular regional or disciplinary specialization alongside the acquisition of knowledge uh, of feminist legal theories and a study of a legal subdiscipline. Um, so in addition to the core modules, you would be required to take um, gender sexuality and law theories and methodologies. And the 60 credits of optional modules would come from a list provided uh, by the law department. You don't need to have a background in law to take this particular program. The law department has an LLM gender and uh, gender and law, which is um, geared towards people who have a background in law for this one you only re really need an interest in law in order to take it. Um, so as I mentioned, we also have um, a distance learning or online degree, which we began running last year. Uh, so this degree runs over two years and it can be done, it's meant to be done remotely and it works really well, both for people who have very heavy full workloads uh, in terms of their professional life and also people who are outside of the UK um, and want a, a, a degree from a UK-based university, but either don't want to move here or don't have the capacity to move here. So the teaching takes place through an online discussion forum where students interact with each other and their teachers um, and are, are also given access to material that's uploaded onto a designated um, site for students to engage with. So readings and qu guiding questions and, and uh, recorded lectures and that, that type of thing. Finally, we also have an MPhil uh, and PhD in gender studies. Um, members of the, of the center and current research students who work, uh, work on an exceptionally wide range of topics, both theoretical and empirical. Um, uh, and you know, if you're interested in a PhD here, we really invite students with interest in researching gender or gender and sexuality in relation to the subspecialisms of security, law, migration and diasporas, social movements, uh, queer theory, uh, uh, transgender studies, critical race theory, transnational feminism, uh, queer or trans of color critique and decolonial epistemologies. Um, now what I wanna do is move on to telling you in a bit more detail about what distinguishes us from other gender studies centers in the UK. Um, so I quite like this quote from a former graduate, uh, from a former graduate of ours, um, where she said, the Center for Gender Studies bridges academia and activism, combines feminist theory with practice, challenges the idea of knowledge production, 
and encourages critical thinking, all the while creating a safe, open, and kind space. So the the spirit in that quote, I think, really describes um, the the you know the the um, the culture that animates our center as a whole, and that links our diverse programs together. So each of our programs offers something specific, as I mentioned. Uh, but now I want to talk to you about their commonalities and what it means to be a member of the Center for Gender Studies rather than just a student enrolled on one of our degree programs. So if I break down the quote that I shared, the student had said that CGS bridges academia and activism and combines feminist theory and practice. So what does this mean and how do we achieve this? So really CGS's programs and curricula will introduce you to alternative feminisms. So to decolonial, intersectional, and transnational feminisms that really can help us imagine how to cultivate solidarity with all who are exploited and oppressed, um, and that you don't dissolve the experiences of people inhabiting diverse parts of the world into one another, but embrace and attempt to learn from these differences. In terms of taking a critical approach to knowledge production, so as the strength and particularity derives from combining traditional academic disciplines with a focus on the study of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Uh, in line with this at CGS, you will not only learn uh, gender and queer theory, but you will learn about these bodies of knowledge in relation to these geographic regions. And importantly, you will think about what it means to adopt a decolonial approach to knowledge acquisition and production when it comes to gender and sexuality. So really looking beyond the Western canon for theories and methodologies. So you learn then to contextualize the region, country, city, and community whose gendered relations you are analyzing. And you learn to approach gender, not in isolation, but intersectionally examining the numerous other dynamics that intersect with it and that shape it and which it shapes. CGS is also a place for taking people seriously on their own terms, for listening to what they say about themselves and their lives, and for thinking critically about encountering the silencing of people in the non-Western world uh, within the academy more broadly. We pride ourselves um, on looking into what activists are doing on the ground in the regions we study, for example, um, you know, when we're studying uh, feminist movements in different contexts. And really more than just learning to represent particular parts of the world, at CGS we encourage you to treat Asia, Africa, and the Middle East as zones of theoretical production as well, so as spaces that can help us theorize about the world we live in. Also, beyond the study of gender and feminist theory, we're also we're committed to approaching queerness as a mode of critique. Uh, so the term queer, as it was originally reimagined, was meant to signify an oppositional stance to whatever is considered normative at a given point in time. So it's both a political orientation and an action, and to queer or to engage in queering as it relates to knowledge production is to radically question established assumptions uh, um, and the ways of thinking that we take for granted. And that's a key part of what we do here at CGS. Lastly, the quote I shared with you mentioned CGS is a space for cultivating community. We like to think of ourselves as a brave space, which is a term that I borrow from, um, um, from, an, from a number of feminist activists. So a space for questioning, uh, for rethinking, for moving beyond the taken for granted and wading into unknown territory with people who have collectively committed to cultivating inclusivity, uh, to calling each other in rather than out, uh, to educating one another, uh, and to approaching difficult topics uh, with respect and sensitivity for one another. So we try to do this not only in our classrooms, uh, but through the public seminars we organize, uh, which provide platforms uh, not only for academics doing important work around questions of gender and sexuality, but to activists and artists as well. And we try to maintain our brave space by also offering our students, um, I'm just admitting someone from the waiting room. Uh, and we try to maintain our brave space by offering our students the opportunity to cultivate their own feminist praxis outside the classroom. So inviting them to take the lead in organizing their own radical self-care events, for example, and offering them the space and the funding needed to do that. Um, 
to end, in terms of career opportunities after completing such a degree, um, gender studies is widely regarded by a range of employers as an excellent training, uh, excellent training space. Uh, so really uh, equipping holders of the degree with a range of relevant employable skills. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, you can, you know, the, 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 the knowledge that you gain on such degrees can be applied to work in public policy, uh, the NGO sector, think tanks, research organizations, journalism and the media more broadly, the cultural sphere, government ministries and programs, advocacy, um, you know, in the end, um, all aspects of our life are touched by gender. Um, and, you know, gender is something that needs to be factored in when we're thinking about politics, when we're thinking about the economy, when we're thinking about a variety of spheres. And so uh, there are multiple ways in which you can imagine uh, these types of degrees essentially being relevant to a variety of, of, of fields. Um, yeah, so I'll leave it um, there um, and open it up to questions. Amazing, thank you so much, Sophie. Um, like I've said before, if you have any questions, whether it be about um, the program, um, life and life at SOAS in general, or sort of about the admissions process, um, feel free to put it in the chat box, um, or if you'd like to raise your hand um, and unmute yourself to ask the question. We've got one person that's raised their hand. Um, Katayun, if you want to ask your question. Hello, hi. Um, yeah, I was wondering about requirements um, because I come from an art background and I've never done any theory-based courses. So I'm just wondering how that would work. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we have, uh, you know, our students come from a, a you know, a variety of backgrounds in terms of what they've studied or, or what they've worked in. We have a lot of people who have no background in the humanities and social sciences who come into these programs. And we factor that into how we teach. So we don't usually assume knowledge on the part of our students in gender studies or in critical theory. What I would say is in terms of applying, you really want to focus your energy on that personal statement. So really telling us why this program is the right fit for you, um, really personalizing it. So taking the personal and personal statements seriously, you know, why is this the right fit for you? Um, what are the courses that excite you? What do you imagine you can get out of them? You know, be specific. Who do you want to study under? Who are you looking forward to getting to know as a lecturer? And what also do you bring to this program, right? What is it about your arts background uh, and the work that you've you've done um, or the things that you've studied that can really allow you to thrive um, um, and to contribute to these degrees, if that makes sense. So it's really just about making the case rather than, you know, um, you know, sort of ticking boxes, just really making the case in your personal statement for why this is the right program for you and not being kind of general about, I'm interested in gender studies, but really telling us why you're interested in this gender studies program. Thank you, that's really helpful. Um, we've had a question come in in the chat box that says, um, roughly how much time is spent on campus versus self-study for the full-time and the part-time um, two and three year programs? <sighs> Um, I mean, this is somewhat of a difficult question to answer, given that we're currently in a blended learning environment because of COVID. Um, I mean, I would say that on a, you know, part people on part-time degrees take less courses per term than people on full-time degrees, right? So people on full-time degrees will have a number of contact hours with lectures during the week. So sometimes you have people taking three courses a term. Sometimes you have people taking five courses a term. So there is a lot of time spent for people on full-time degrees in lectures or in tutorials or in seminars, um, less so for part-time students who tend to take one to two classes a term, for example. Um, in terms of being on campus, um, again, somewhat difficult to answer right now, um, uh, really kind of depends how the pandemic goes along. Uh, right now, all of our lectures are online, large seminars are online, uh, but smaller classes and tutorials have been um, in many cases running on campus. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I can't really say much more about that, but I can just say that 
you do have, uh, you will be taking a lot of classes. Um, uh, yeah, cl I, I, you know, your classes can be in the morning or they can be around, there are classes that run from five to 7 p.m. Not much, not later than that though. Um, I actually don't know what the limit for the personal statement is. Amani, do you know? Yeah, so it's um, a thousand words is the limit. Um, I believe there's a sort of guide on our website. Oh, let me see if I can find it for you about what um, we look for in a personal statement. I will see if I can um, send you the link for that. Um, I've just popped that in there. So it's no more than a thousand words. And in general, we look for um, sort of the reasons why you're interested in the program and then sort of highlight your relevant experience and suitability for the program, as well as mention if you've got any future plans as to what you want to use your degree for in the future and what career you want to go into, then I would suggest including that as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think talking about what you want to do with this experience and this degree. If you do have any more questions, feel free to pop them in the chat box or raise your hand if you'd like to um, unmute yourself as well. Um, yep, Rabab. Hi, um, so I had a question because I'm, uh, I'm applying uh, for, uh, for a session next year. Uh, hopefully fall, and I've, I'm also an applicant for the Shevning scholarships. So I was wondering, um, currently I'm having an issue uh, with my passport. I mean, I just need to renew it. But if I have to, if I attach my passport, the photocopy, uh, it's set to expire next year, February. Uh, however, I'll get it renewed this year. So will that be a problem? Like if I attach uh, the one with the expiring date, the expiring date is next year. That should be fine. If you're making an application now, you can put in your um, your passport that's expiring in February. And then um, once you do receive your new one, um, all you'd have to do is just email it to our admissions office, a scan of it, um, and they can just update that in your file. Um, in terms of the question in the chat, our cohort, I don't, to my knowledge, I don't think we have a cap on how many we admit, but our cohort is usually around 50 students. Um, that's usually what we're, the numbers that we, 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 we get in gender studies in terms of how many we end up with. But how many we admit will depend on how many people apply and the quality of those applications in the end. Yes, across all degrees in gender studies. Um, but again, this is just an, an average of the numbers we've had in the last couple of years rather than um, a limit. Um, we, we have a lot of international students. It's a, it's a real mix, I'd say, between, between home and international, but we get a significant number of international students. In terms of the personal statement, um, I would recommend keeping it to a thousand words um, just for our, it's just our guidelines that our admissions team have set. So if you are able to um, just get it down to a thousand words, then that's um, good. I had another question. Uh, how much time do we get to complete the dissertation? 
Uh, you actually have quite a bit of time. So you would start working on your dissertation in term three. That's around April, and then it's uh, it's due in September. So the entirety of term three, and then the summer, really. Okay. So uh, till fall. Till till September. September eighth usually is around the, the deadline. But yeah, I guess fall. Yeah. yeah. Yes, if you're a part-time student, the dissertation will be written in your last year. If there aren't any more questions, um, we can probably wrap up the session. I just want to say if you have any sort of admissions questions um, before applying. Oh, we do have one more question that's come in. Um, do you need to have a degree in gender studies in order to apply for a PhD? No, you don't. Um, of course, it, it works in, in your favor to have a degree in gender studies, um, but it's not a requirement. So um, I wanted to ask another question was, um, let's say for instance, if a student gets selected for the Shevning scholarships um, and at the same time, they've also applied to SOAS uh, for, uh, to start the session uh, in the next year. So how soon do you let the student know if they're, uh, if they're selected or not for the program? Um, that one I'm not particularly sure of. Okay. Um, but um, what I can do is I will put my email in the chat box. If you want to send me the just an email about it, I can follow it up for you and get back to you with a response. Should I send my email? Um, so I put my email in. If you want to okay. send me an email um, about the Achievement Scholarship, then I will um, follow it up and get back to you regarding okay. that. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, for references, references, especially for PhD uh, applications should be academic, but they should also be academic for a master's. I'd say if you've been uh, working for a while then, and for it's for a master's then, um, you know, maybe one professional, one academic. Um, examples of dissertation topics, to be honest, is, is very, very, very broad. Um, so I'm, I, I hesitate to give an example because I feel like that then, you know, um, makes it seem narrower than it is, but um, you know we have we had students, you know, work on NGOization. We've had students write more experimental dissertations. We've had students write dissertations based on their own experiences and putting that in conversation with theory. We've had um, uh, interview-based uh, dissertations. So really, you know, things on activism um, in a particular region. Uh, really, a variety a variety of topics. Um,
Okay, I think if there are no more questions, then, um, oh, we do have a question that's just come in. Um, Mathilde, do you wanna unmute yourself? Sorry for um, delaying, but um, I was wondering, so I, uh, if I understood correctly, uh, we can apply to two different programs at the same time, right? Like put a preference and then a second preference. Is that correct? Yeah, so uh, you can't have two separate applications in the same academic year, but what you can do is put down your first choice program and your second choice program. Um, and so you'd only be considered for your second choice if your first choice um, is unsuccessful. Okay, and um, can those two options be in two different departments? And if so, uh, is the personal statement one for both or will it be one for each? I don't know. If um, yeah, so you can um, put in, so your first choice and your second choice can be from two different departments. Um, I would write your personal statement for your first choice program. Um, okay. And if you are then going to be considered for your second choice program, what it would be is that our admissions team would likely contact you to ask for a personal statement um, or a sort of supporting statement for your second choice program. Okay, thank you so much. Um, in terms of the questions in the chat, yes, the, the ages of our students do vary. So we do get students who are fresh out of uh, their undergrad. We do have students who've been working for you know a number of years. We have mature students as well. So it does definitely vary. Um, for the, uh, you know, I think Amani for the question on decisions, that's... Um, yeah, so um, our team usually look for a sort of complete application, they look to make a decision within um, around four weeks. Um, but if there are missing parts of your application and they will get in contact with you um, for you to supply those pieces of information that are missing in your application and then um, make a decision on that. Um, in terms of uh, Jitna's question, yes, you can take uh, language courses as part of your optional credits. You should be able to see the optional credits on the course pages, yes. Just keep in mind that not all the courses listed there will necessarily be on offer. Yeah, just following on from that, all the optional modules for the ones that are sort of part of the department that you're in will be on the page, but there is also another link that takes you to the open option modules. So if it's part of your course structure, you're able to take um, modules from other departments um, and those will be listed and they're all on a PDF and there will be a link on the structure page that will take you to that as well. And if there's an optional module that you wanna take that's not given as an option for your degree, you can speak to your program convener and they can uh, they can approve it for you basically if they feel like they understand the 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 reason why you want to take that class. So don't don't worry too much if there's a module you really want to take that's not listed there. Um, you know, more often than not, we'd approve that sort of thing. I just wanted to add before we um, sort of wrap up, if you have any admissions questions um, before you make your application or while you're making your application, 
um, you can contact study at soas.ac.uk. Um, and I've just put that in the chat and they will be able to get back to you um, on sort of the application process if you do have any questions on that. I think we can wrap up the session if there are no more questions. Um, like, like I've said before, if you want to contact um, study at SOAS um, or any academics as well, if you have any questions regarding specific modules that they are the conveners of, um, their details are all listed on the website. Um, I want to say a big thank you to Sophie for um, the session today. It's been really insightful and I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you. Very, very much hoping to see some of your applications come in um, and have a great day. Thanks so thank much. You. Thank help. you.